My name is Ivan. I'm the professor of uh, the Rush University. Before I studied uh, in the physical university, then I came back to went to the United States. I worked in uh, Google and Yandex. I was uh, two for two years a consultant of markings, and now I I focus on the studies in Rush. So today I would like to talk about artificial intelligence and what is going to be in one in a long term time. So I was asked to do this. Uh, a report by a large ba bank uh, by those who were interested what's going on uh, with artificial intelligence in long term so when i was preparing this uh, report so i asked uh, gpt chat what is going to do with artificial intelligence in the long term and uh, the model gave me very good uh, answers so artificial intelligence and that great methodologies that have appeared so something that will help us a lot to improve our life so everything that is linked to in the healthcare in education and so on and so forth have been discussed so many times and it's a very important regulation and risks the russian central bank is interested in improving regulatory level what is interesting for us uh, is uh, the labor market. Uh, you've probably heard about studies of uh, Bloomberg, McKinsey, and so on and so forth, uh, where it said that uh, white colors will be affected uh, badly and uh, many vacancies uh, will disappear. That's a very uh, dangerous trend. And then the infrastructure market, GPU, and all tools uh, that are needed in order to learn uh, artificial intelligence, intelligence uh, models. Everything sounds uh, very logical. Apart from one thing, uh, it's uh, very trivial. So if you look at the first trend uh, appearance of the strong uh, artificial intelligence, even in 1950 in the US, uh, it was written that uh, the Navy revealed the ember of an electronic computer that will be able to walk, talk, see, write, reproduce itself and be con conscious of its existence. Uh, so it was uh, mentioned in 19, back in 1959. So it sounds good uh, and uh, it's nice uh, to talk about GPT, but you can ask uh, about trend development. Why is it very easy? Because a GPT a chat, it's uh, a kind uh, like a parrot that uh, understands a lot about the world but in a mathematical uh, understanding uh, is uh, replaced by the capability to reproduce as the next word so it can read uh, a text uh, and it can, pre uh, can predict uh, what wor word will be next so this is a very easy model but that works very well so if you look at this uh, long sentence how two people talk, one says uh, it's need, uh, his need, and uh, another gives advice for a person. It's not obvious what uh, word is missing in this sentence. Uh, so first we have to think about it. The GPT chart uh, says uh, Sberbank in a very confidential way, understanding that Sberbank is the largest bank, uh, so he fills the gaps. It fills the gaps uh, very fast. So this is a parrot, but a very cool parrot. And when this model was uh, introduced uh, on the market as uh, an almond, uh, so he wrote a tweet uh, where he said that GPT chat is a parrot, but you are my readers also kind of parrots, some sort of parrots. And uh, it's partially true because when I start uh, saying uh, sentences, I don't know what I'm going to say then. So uh, there is a prediction direction of my thought, but every second uh, a word generates uh, itself. So probably I am quite similar to a GPT chart, uh, but it's not just a parrot. It's a parrot that is quite old. So the technologies are that are at the basis of the GPT chart. So this is not a breakthrough of 2023 so these are quite other things uh, google uh, introduced it in 2017 deep mind uh, yes uh, come up with it uh, quite many years ago but now they have been upgraded uh, the open era invested a lot in order to do a very cool moment model to learn to with a huge uh, massive of data and uh, get uh, such a strong instrument but in terms of sign uh, there are no many developments uh, that have appeared f since 1917. So if you talk about trends, the first scenario is that nothing interesting will appear, uh, will happen in science, so the right technologies and we will keep uh, developing it. And uh, then 
GPT opens are lots of uh, opportunities for products. So bank can use it, banks can use it. Uh, some services like Alisa will be very useful and will change uh, the way we interact uh, with products, uh, with companies and so on. If uh, market, marketing today uh, is uh, focused on people, so sites uh, should be attractive, then marketing uh, may uh, shift uh, towards uh, virtual assistants. Uh, so such uh, questions like uh, buy a product for me will be uh, done uh, via our voice. Uh, uh, with assistance and that uh, chats will be adapted uh, will, will have to be adapted to them and uh, all of you can uh, come up with some very cool ideas if one year i had an advantage so i knew how to train models like bird uh, now i have no advantage uh, like that because uh, chat gpt can uh, do it uh, as well as i could do it so let's talk about uh, the science and the third train uh, ai winter so there have been uh, many hype uh, waves uh, in AI in in 1980s uh, in 19 uh, in and uh, then they would get uh, nowhere. So there were quite many expectations, uh, but uh, then uh, that everybody got tired uh, to that, and there was no high interest. I hope uh, there won't be winter. But since the scenario still exists today, in the second of my part of my talk, we will talk about the science, uh, what interesting things may happen in the scientific area and how it can change the world and the AI in general. In order to talk about it, uh, let me give a short description of uh, how AI works. Uh, and the majority of use cases that are uh, used by the company are very simple. We have lots of historical data we analyze them through a mathematical model, we identify patterns, and then we apply these patterns for the new data. All the use cases are the same. So YouTube uh, analyzes what uh, people have watched before, then find dependencies, let's say you like flashy headlines, and then they start to recommend us uh, 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 same similar videos banks uh, see who used to take loans who were when default and uh, what to do with these customers in future GPT works in the same manner there are lots of texts that are generated by people GPT chat uh, analyzes them and then uh, utilizes the patterns in the new uh, dialogue so this is how it looks like so what's the problem actually it can be illustrated uh, in the following manner let's take YouTube as a, an example you uh, most likely watch YouTube <laughs> some short videos. YouTube manager would like to uh, improve the platform and also earn money. You cannot uh, uh, make, you cannot uh, let it go down. So YouTube improves uh, the platform and YouTube uh, team can say, okay, we have analyzed lots of data and we understand how by headline you can forecast the number of views. So we understand that this headline will be liked by people and the other one won't be liked. But managers cannot just forecast. They need to manage the information, the data, so they will do a simple thing. They will uh, change the system of recommendations and uh, for instance YouTube is able to forecast uh, uh, the views by uh, the view but then they may uh, YouTube can have additional feature and can do forecasting uh, in a different uh, way as well and everyone receives a relevant um, uh, uh, recommendations, so YouTube gets more clicks, uh, more money from advertisers, but then there can be a problem in this setup. We forgot about uh, the authors of uh, the videos because YouTube also brings together creators and creators will understand that recommendations are different and at certain point clickbait will start and it's not an um, uh, imaginary problem, actually it exists. Uh, to Today you can do previews for videos. I don't. You, if you use videos, so you know that every video has preview, and very often you may uh, tap like uh, liked mass lectures, and you will uh, see uh, a beautiful girl talking about mass. Then you click, and uh, there will be uh, an old guy talking about some theories. And actually, this is a trend that was captured, uh, that was um, identified, and actually the system can become worse. So we use to do recommendations one way now we are recommending based uh, we are providing recommendations based on uh, 
headlines and now it's going worse it's an easy case but uh, anyway it's very illustrative we use AI in a very aggressive ways we look at the male models we integrate them and uh, we see, uh, watch how they exchange how they change our uh, business but AI works in a very trivial way it analyzes all data and applies this uh, for the new data and of course uh, the rest is not taken into account so in the in the long term, it may uh, tap the economical balance. So we change our recommendation system. So our business metrics will improve, but the system adapts. So the clickbait uh, bait interferes, Uber drivers that manipulate our pricing system and they uh, increase, uh, uh, they create chats uh, and uh, so the balance uh, may be disturbed and in this regard AI does not help us and uh, um, works um, uh, as a misservice. I'll give you another example that is TikTok. I don't use uh, TikTok now but during COVID uh, for me TikTok was really popular. Why did I drop out? Because uh, systems of recommendations became so sophisticated. I watch uh, videos all the time and I understood that I may spend an entire hour on TikTok and way too much and therefore I decided to delete the platform. So you see the platform is improving improving the system of recommendations. It's bec it becomes better and better but then the user understands wow that's too much. It's too time consuming and leaves the platform altogether. So this is another ex uh, example of uh, hyper optimization and it means that the system drifts somewhere and uh, there is a fundamental uh, gap between the researchers and the users. If you look at the business, uh, the questions are very simple. What needs to be done in order to change something? What needs to be done to improve YouTube? What needs to be done to make sure that banks issue loans in a better, more efficient way? What it needs to be done so that so business wants to change things and wants to use uh, the AI as a driver for those changes. However, the paradigm uh, it works differently and the solutions pro that are provided are different. So uh, actually, we understand that if nothing is changed, we know what video will be clicked by what user, but it means uh, so if we do not uh, change anything in the credit scoring and we use the same rules, things will be good. We know who will go default. However, if we start issuing uh, credits in a different way, we may not be responsible for the um, dynamics. So AI is a passive observer. So it observes, uh, it analyzes what has happened and it can forecast the future by a certain extent. And this uh, gap uh, creates uh, the main challenge. And uh, actually, we as scientists, we need to think about algorithms that not only will forecast uh, the uh, current situation of the system, but will improve the system, but also will understand its dynamic. And it's a huge challenge. It's a very difficult thing. I don't know whether you are aware of the statistics. Statistics works with trivial models because statistics works with linear regression. But we in our machine learning went too far. We have very uh, strong models, but they tell us nothing about uh, the uh, cause and uh, effect uh, uh, links. Uh, and uh, if uh, uh, again, uh, GPT chat is very cool, it's very strong, but it does not understand anything about cause and effect uh, system. So uh, let me tell you why you cannot use AI for fundamental uh, improvement, let's say for the social system. And let's take a look at uh, the uh, case that is uh, that comes from the legal system. I'm sure you know Daniel Kahneman. He was the Nobel Prize uh, winner, although uh, he's a psychologist. Uh, the first uh, uh, book is very uh, famous, Think uh, Fast uh, and Act Fast. And the other uh, book is not so popular. It's called uh, Noise. And uh, so there were uh, several cases analyzed. There were several judges that uh, looked at the same uh, case and it, uh, the description of the case had it all to make a decision. The questions uh, uh, that uh, were addressed uh, to the defendant uh, and uh, answers provided. Everything was clear, but um, 
Uh, you see the lack of consensus among judges was not an exception, it was a norm. And uh, actually the punishment was uh, could range between one to 10 years of um, imprisonment or even a sentence on probation. And uh, that's actually not what we want. Because when we go to the uh, court, we want, we expect uh, to uh, be judged uh, in a fair way. So I thought, uh, why don't we uh, try to replace the judges with AI? Uh, if we use a model, it can give, for the same case, it will for sure give same uh, decision and there will be no dispersion. And the first steps for attempts were made in this regard in the United States, so there is a compass. It doesn't mean that people should be sent uh, to uh, sh sh should go to the jail uh, automatically. This model is used to evaluate uh, uh, the uh, risk of the repeat uh, crime. Uh, so uh, it's this case uh, is very popular in the United States. So the courts, uh, uh, the judges use it to understand who can go on probation and who should uh, uh, go to uh, jail. Uh, the judges uh, trust this algorithm and there are cases when judges uh, can um, make decisions in several seconds because they have made already, they saw that AI already scored the person. And so this is like a compass. So what is interesting is the algorithm works like a black box. Nobody knows how it is uh, designed except for the designers. So this justice system in the United States buys it from the creators without knowing how it is uh, created. So the judicial system in America is very interesting. So this uh, device was integrated and at certain point uh, the inventors could open the case and the case was the following <laughs> so one was white and another was black. They were detained uh, for the same accusation and they had a similar story. One tried to uh, uh, break in, another one uh, resisted uh, during an attempt to arrest him. An algorithm provided uh, uh, different assessments. One received low risk and the other one received a uh, high risk. So nursing bad is here uh, and uh, they looked uh, at their track in the next two years and it turned out that the first had several repeat crimes and the second the one did not do anything and here is the mistake. So the low one received, uh, the white one received low risk and the black one uh, you know, he received high risk, but uh, he never tried to repeat the crime. So that spurred a more profound study of the algorithm. And uh, uh, the designers uh, asked themselves what should be an honest algorithm for um, uh, sparing the uh, smart and uh, fair decision. And uh, so what is uh, offered here uh, about the honesty? So let's uh, look at people who uh, were at courts in 2020. So, so we know who uh, made a crime again, who committed a crime, and those who didn't. So, so now we're in 2023, so we know who uh, we were uh, in court and who have not. So we wanted, uh, we want uh, for those people to give a low risk uh, because uh, there was no uh, recurrent crime. And uh, for those uh, who committed another crime, a second or third crime, they would give them a high risk and uh, it turned out that compass uh, doesn't give uh, uh, yes uh, doesn't correlate uh, to a high or low risk uh, depending on the second uh, recurrent crime so this uh, looks like a fundamental error and uh, everything is bad with this algorithm but uh, the company that uh, committed it uh, it believes that uh, the algorithm is quite honest and they say we took an, another approach to the honest algorithm we look at all people and we compare the precision uh, precision between the races uh, between the white race and the black race and the precision is quite good so statistically we did everything correct we did everything right and uh, the uh, error matrix is good white okay uh, towards uh, white and black people and then it led to another uh, research uh, so how happens uh, how come uh, that uh, yes uh, we uh, get uh, end up in such in a such situation so in mathematically there is a, a theory that says if you there are two different uh, groups uh, if uh, white uh, people commit a crime uh, uh, more seldom than uh, black uh, people so it's a uh, 
quite impossible to make uh, an equal algorithm. So scientific community interprets it uh, in not in a proper way. There are dozens of articles that say give uh, more and more definitions of honesty, and uh, they are used uh, to design new algorithms, and everybody's ha happy. So now we are in a situation when we have about 20 uh, definitions of honesty, uh, dozens of algorithms that are satisfied to one definition but do not satisfy to another one. The problem is interpretation, so we can do it uh, in an informal way. That's uh, what uh, the business does. The company says that uh, the uh, algorithm is bias free. What does it mean? Nobody knows, but uh, they just uh, select a definition and they um, develop uh, an algorithm um, yes, uh, based on the definition. So bias free in America is used everywhere. It's like organic. Uh, but it leads uh, to, it doesn't lead to a good result. The right approach would be what do we want to do? What do we want? Uh, how do we want this compass uh, to operate? Uh, we want uh, our not ideal work to make it more ideal if possible. So we want our world that is a uh, kind of uh, uh, bias and stigma to make it more ideal. Understand, we understand it's quite impossible because there are quite many other factors, education, uh, ability to find a job, police and so on and so forth. And an ideal work, uh, world, uh, everything, everybody should have equal opportunities uh, to education, to work, to, uh, yes, uh, to so on and so forth and that would be yes first of all we will have to provide conditions for very fair world but our world is not fair and it's not idea and the social groups are different starting from the very first day of our birth and uh, black people uh, have uh, quite many problems uh, in Russia women uh, uh, face uh, uh, not equal uh, conditions at work and the uh, mathematicians say that uh, you can't uh, make uh, an algorithm ideal in one point, uh, but um, yes, um, yes, and, and achieve an ideal situation at the end. So it is uh, important uh, to look at the dynamics of the system and understand uh, how it could be changed. And not luckily, let's say uh, we will release uh, more black people, but it uh, will work uh, long term in order to understand uh, what drivers uh, uh, there are uh, and uh, what uh, yes uh, what is the cause and uh, if uh, cause uh, if, uh, cause effect and the last part is very short uh, what could we do in uh, terms of finance what our banks or regulators can do in order to develop better algorithm Russia in a very unique situation we have uh, Sberbank that is bank as, as bank of everybody that can influence uh, the system uh, in Russia dramatically in uh, the United States uh, banks account for 10 or 15 percent of the market so they cannot uh, yes uh, influence uh, the market but in Russia it's a bit different uh, so if we analyze uh, data on a credit issue and we will see that in the United States a situation quite uh, the same so we will see that uh, yes if we analyze uh, those uh, who uh, applicants uh, for credit so uh, we will see that uh, uh, women uh, get uh, less approval fewer approval compared to men uh, due to this algorithm that uh, do not uh, let uh, to give uh, more approvals for women so why does it happen uh, because there is an algorithm and it's exceptional uh, yes uh, features so we use uh, so there are uh, certain dates uh, so for example somebody who was born in the united states another one uh, was born in state uh, in, uh, in in mexico so we use a social security number and uh, certainly uh, this uh, data work differently a different situation in uh, for americans it could be very respective data but uh, for those uh, who moved from mexico they uh, there are some uh, data that cannot uh, be taken into account and the same goes for mortgage so let's say one uh, person lives in california where google microsoft and other companies are based uh, real estate uh, is uh, getting more expensive another one uh, works in uh, and lives in detroit where there is only one large company in that uh, case a uh, bank does not uh, pay attention to a person who gives it uh, so so for the bank, it is important that uh, the uh, apartment is uh, liquid and could be sold uh, very fast. So in that case, uh, so the mortgage of in California would uh, have a high chance to be given uh, compared to uh, uh, real estate in in, uh, Detro in Detroit. Uh, and in terms of uh, 
equal opportunities. Uh, we see that situation is not suitable because uh, we are not access people, but we access uh, mortgage uh, real estate, uh, and uh, this is not uh, certainly fair. And it's that same would go uh, for Moscow, for example, for a mortgage in Moscow compared to mortgage in the Krasnersk region. So, <laughs> but in fact, uh, inequality. What I want to say, so this is not an equal situation, but I suggest that uh, we just uh, should look at it uh, from a different point of view because uh, this is a lost advantage for a bank because uh, if bank says no to a person who is capable of uh, returning the credit, it means that bank loses money. So we should uh, look uh, on it not from a philosophical point of view, but from the point of lost advantage. Uh, for bank, it is uh, important uh, to see such opportunities and uh, use them. So how how can they do it? So they should, if they can find uh, groups uh, where we lose this advantage, competitive advantage, uh, to track dynamics, uh, to understand uh, why we make uh, a mistake and invest some uh, money in order to restore such a gap. And in that situation, there will be a win-win situation. On one hand, uh, we will uh, shorten the inequality and uh, then we will get some profit. So it's good uh, for those who get a mortgage, let's say, and it's good for us uh, as we make money on it. So this is a very real thing. but. The problem is that uh, one uh, person won't be enough to do. So in the risk department, uh, uh, usually there is just one person that uh, works with figures and does very well. But if uh, for such uh, programs uh, across uh, team is needed, so such sociologists, uh, policy, uh, policy makers, and so on and so on, so those who will be able to um, uh, track uh, the whole dynamics and understand uh, what uh, could, could be done. But in our banks, uh, they work uh, very proactively in that sol uh, solution. And I hope uh, that, uh, yes, uh, we will see very good uh, results. Well, that is it. Thank you very much for your time and attention. And uh, have a great day. So if you have any questions, I will be very happy to answer them during the break.